nice to see some of you here. Uh, and obviously, uh, hello to anyone who's watching online as well. Um, just to let you, well, you people know, and if you're watching online as well, there will be a couple of, mo a couple of um, activities where um, we ask you to talk about things, discuss things in groups um, in, in a minute, actually. If, you're, if you are watching online and you're with people, then obviously discuss with people. Um, if you're on your own, then obviously um, you need to kind of think. Um, I wouldn't expect you to talk out loud to yourself unless you want to, but um, maybe make some notes or something like that, and then we can, uh, we'll kind of come back and, and talk about it together. Okay, so um, no one introduced me, did they? So I'll, I'll in I'm, I'm Paul Braddock. I work for the British Council. Uh, I'm based in Barcelona, but I work um, for something called Global Products uh, in the teacher development area. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about is, is basically the work that um, I've been involved in over the last couple of years, um, which has been to develop something called Teaching for Success, which is the theme of this conference. Um, it's sort of become my life, really, for the last two years, I suppose. It's kind of all I do, um, apart from organise online conferences, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, Teaching for Success is, is the British Council's new approach um, to CPD. If you don't know what CPD is, it's Continuing Professional Development. Um, and there are various things that we've developed as part of the Teaching for Success approach, uh, which I'll be talking about as well. So we've got a, a framework, a continuing professional development framework, uh, modularised training, and, uh, and free resources on the Teaching English website, which is actually my job title. I'm, I'm um, the, the web manager of the Teaching English website. It's, do, you, do you all know the Teaching English website? Does anyone use the Teaching English website? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good answer. All right. <laughs> you had to say yes. So you didn't, there's, there's so few of you that if you didn't, then you'd be singled out. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with a couple of quotes. Um, the first quote uh, is, is this one. An education system is only as good as its teachers. Uh, and the second one is an education system is only as good as its teaching. Um, the first one, as good as its teachers, is, uh, by, uh, is published in the McKinsey Report from 2007. Uh, there's the link there. Uh, it's, it was a, a paper written on how the world's best performing schools come out on top. So it looked, uh, it, was, it was a study basically in um, effective professional development globally um, and, and looked at um, uh, uh, the reasons why um, professional development was, was successful in, in certain places. This, this, is, this is a quote um, that comes from that report and is, is used quite often. You might, you might have heard of it. The second quote is by a guy called Chris Husbands, who works for the Institute of Education in London. Um, and he wrote an article um, here, uh, Great Teachers or Great Teaching, Why McKinsey Got It Wrong. So his, his, his article really is, is arguing against um, that quote and saying why it should be teaching and not teachers, um, which make an edu education system good. So what I would like you to do before we kind of come back and I give my sort of thoughts on this is, um, so if you're sitting on your own somewhere, like you, uh, you're going to ask, you're going to have to move so that you're talking with somebody, if that's okay. What I'd like you to do is, is think about those two quotes. Is, is there really a difference between those two quotes? If there is a difference, what, what is that difference? What is, if we replace teachers with teaching, what does that mean? Um, which one do you agree with, or which one do you think is, is the best quote, um, and, and why? So again, people, if you're watching online, either think about that um, or talk about it with the people that you're, you're watching with, okay? So we'll have just two or three minutes to do that, all right? We're just, um, we're just having a discussion about these two quotes okay. here. 
um, and which one people think is, is, is the best one and why. So I don't know, you, you probably need to, well, you will need to, to sit with, with someone and join them, yeah? Hey, come in, if you want to come in. <laughs> hey, do you, want, do you want to join with, with these people here? Because we're having a discussion at the moment, so you're going to need to... Tienes que hablar con alguien sobre el tema de esos dos. Bueno, es igual, pero... Perfect. <laughs> the thing is that there's a cafe across the way. They've obviously kind of seen, seen the cafe across the road and decided that that's a better option. That. It's a nice posh cafe. So, so, you know. All right. Um, obviously, I've, I haven't given you very long to discuss that, but the nice thing about the fact that we've got a small audience is that we can actually um, get your ideas. So if to start over here... Um, if, if you tell me, and then I'll, because obviously there's people watching online, if you kind of shout them out, or, or, or some of the things that you give, give us a sort of a summary of what you were talking about. Pretty, it's pretty what, sorry? It's sad. Sad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if, if, if you kind of go with that one, then if you're not a good teacher, then yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So it's kind of about the methods of... of, of yeah, okay. Um, good. Over here. Okay, okay, okay. So you can all be, so I'll just sort of say that, so the idea is that you, you're all trained in the same way, you, you follow the same kind of methodology, but actually what you, what you do with that in the classroom is, okay, okay. Um, and finally, down here, this little group. You don't have to say anything if you don't know what to. It's okay, all right. Do you want, should we come back when, when you feel ready to, if you want to, then you can, you can say something, it's fine. Um, okay, w w was there one that you preferred? Did, did you think there's a difference? Did you think that one is better than the other? Which one, if, if, you, had to, if you had to choose, if your life depended on choosing one of those two, um, would you choose teachers? Put your hand up if you would choose the first quote. One, two, three, four. Okay, Four of you. Okay, and, and so obviously the, re the rest of you teaching. Yeah, you just put your hands up so I can count you. One, two, three. Oh, okay, the rest of you think. No, it's, it's exactly. Yeah, I know. Um, I think yeah. I mean, if, if, you, if you take an education system as, as, as the curriculum, um, then then yeah. I mean, you have to teach X, Y, and Z things. I think I think the key thing is is ha how how you teach those things. Whether you're a, whether you're a good or a bad teacher, or whether you use good teaching or bad teaching to to teach that curriculum is is is, is the key thing. Yeah. Um, what what Chris Husbands says in his argument um, about why he thinks teachers is, 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 is wrong and it should be teaching. Um, from, a, from a policy point of view, if you focus on, on teachers, it's a little bit like what you said, if you focus on, on the teachers, um, then it's focusing on the people and it follows that if the people um, are not up to the standard required, then you replace them with ones that you think 
are. So the implications from, from a teacher's point of view, obviously, is, 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 is quite precarious. Um, the, the, there, there are lots of different arguments, and, and, and you can look at Chris Husband's article and, and pull it apart in the same way as you can take the McKinsey report and pull that apart as well. But for me, I think the usefulness of, of thinking about the differences um, when trying to answer the questions is, is things like, um, if you say, what is a good teacher? Um, it, it's very easy to become quite black and white about that. You're either a good teacher or you're not a good teacher. It, it, it's, it's very easy to kind of oversimplify, if you like, um, whether you're good or bad. Um, and there's no in-between. So it, it, it invites this kind of broad evaluation, if you like. And I think if you ask, when we're all in education. We're all, we're all kind of either teachers or administrators or managers. If you ask someone who um, is not in education what, what is a good teacher, then, then, then the list they'll come out with is probably quite a broad list. Um, things like they're nice, they're a good rapport, my kids like them, um, they, they teach the subject, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you um, also think about a good teacher, a good teacher compared to, to what? Or a good teacher compared to who? Within, within a school or within an institution, if, you're, if, you're, um, if you use observations in your classroom, then, then I think naturally we tend to, to watch teachers and think about what they're doing and, and think about other teachers that we've seen. And there's, there's, it's, it's very easy to kind of start when you, when you think, OK, were they, were they a good teacher, were they a bad teacher? You start to sort of draw those comparisons, I think, with, with, with other teachers that are working either in the school or in, in the institution where you work. Um, also, I think a lot of the time, when we think about a good teacher, often we, we, we equate that with, um, with antiquity or antiquidad. Often, if, if, if a teacher has been teaching for a long time, then there's an assumption that perhaps they're, that, that, that they must be a good teacher. They've been teaching for 10, 15, 20 years. They must be um, a good teacher because they've got experience. They've been in the classroom for that long, and therefore, they obviously know what they're doing. Um, <clears throat> and I think probably we can all come up with people who we think are good teachers um, quite easily. But if we think about what's good teaching, it, it, it kind of makes the... It, the question for me, I think, is, is, is more complex. It's a more complex thing to think about. What, what are the elements that make up good teaching? What are the things that we do that make what we do in the classroom good or bad or effective or less effective? Um, and so on. I think that there are so many variables, basically, and it's always changing. So in terms of what was a good teacher or what was good teaching 10 years ago, say, isn't necessarily a good teacher or good teaching today because there are so many things that have changed um, to the way we learn, to the, way our, to, to the makeup of our students, to the tools available to us, and so on. So um, the thing... Uh, per personally, my, my feeling... I mean, I, I, like, I like teaching, um, but I, before I saw as good as it's teaching, I never really thought about... Um, the first quote, good teachers. But, as I say, things change. The education system changes, the curriculum changes, the way our students learn change, the, the, the identity of our students changes. So whether or not we agree with the first one or the second one, I think, is, is almost irrelevant. What, what's, what's useful about thinking about those two quotes and deciding which one's good and which one isn't or which one you prefer is the fact that it encourages that, that discussion, it encourages the kind of the reflection um, on, on what teaching is or what a good teacher is. Um, and that's kind of part of what I want to talk about today is, is the idea of reflection, the idea of, 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 of continually kind of looking at what we do as teachers and what we do with our teaching and thinking about whether it's good, whether it's not, whether it's effective, and so on. Okay? Um, okay, so as I said, there are changes um, to the way we learn. Um, blended learning has become much more prominent. Um, my, my son has just started high school um, and he came home from school on Thursday and the homework was to go to the Moodle site for their school and print off some documents. Um, and he had problems because he couldn't get the pass key and so on and so forth. But if you think about that homework, my son saying, I need to go to the Moodle, I need to print off these documents and read them for tomorrow's class, 10 years, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, no one knew what Moodle was. Um, I don't even think Moodle existed 20 years ago. So there's that, there's, there's that kind of blended element that, that is now coming in more and more into mainstream education. Um, the skills that learners need, if, if you were in Joe's talk earlier on this morning, um, the plenary talk, obviously we look at 
She talked about digital natives and whether you agree with that or not is, 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 is by the by, but the idea that we are much more connected and the skills that we need in the classroom need to, need to prepare us and equip us for, for that connected world. Um, also things like um, leadership, creativity, all of these, these elements that are called, I suppose, 21st century skills, um, collaboration, team working, have all been there, but they're now far more prominent in, in, in the world of work. So in terms of equipping our learners for going into the world of, of, of work, um, of employers now are looking far more for those kind of leadership qualities and that, that ability to collaborate, which I think um, wasn't so, so prominent perhaps 5, 10, 15 years ago. So there's those skills that we need to bring in. How do we do that? when we've got a curriculum that we need to get through so they can pass the exam at the end of the year. Um, the identity of our learners. Again, I'm going to use my children as an example. Um, in a talk that I saw last year, in terms of, of kind of multilingualism, for example, um, the makeup of, of students in our classes is, 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 is changing almost imperceptibly towards a more multilingual um, in, environment. So my, my son and my daughter are both um, native English speakers. My wife's English. Um, go into the English classes, and, and they're not the only ones anymore. It might be that, you know, again, sort of a few years ago or ten years ago, you might have one or two students in the classroom who were, were native English speakers. What, what do you do with them in the English class? Well, they'll just have to kind of deal with it because everyone else is, 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 is having to study English, and we just have to do that. But now you get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten children in the classroom who, who, who speak good English. Um, what, what do you do with them? You can't just sort of push them into a corner and say they just have to do everything else. So the way we adapt our teaching to, to suit that um, and bring in that, that element of, of or awareness, if you like, of multilingualism needs to be something that, that, that comes into what we're doing on a daily basis. And the tools available for learning, um, I, I mentioned um, Moodles at the, at the first point, um, but, th but there's far more. We've got mobile, um, which, which our students um, or teenage students and even younger um, are very adept at using and can be a very good tool for learning. Um, so with all of these changes, it's, it, it's, it's kind of imperative as far as I can see, and I think we'd agree that, that we can't stand still. We can't do our pre-training, our, 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 our initial teacher training, become teachers, and, and assume that, that the knowledge that we've got from that is, is sufficient to, um, to, ha to help us and equip us fully in the classroom. So what do we do? How do we do that? How do we, how do we improve? How do we change the way we teach? How do we reflect on the way we teach? Um, and one of the key words, obviously, in continuing professional development is the word continuing. Um, and the idea, really, with continuing professional development is it's, is it's a constant reflection. It's, 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 it's a cyclical process whereby we're looking at what we do in the classroom, reflecting on that, making changes, and then implementing those changes measuring those changes, um, either through observation mechanisms or further reflection, and then adjusting again. So it's, 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 it's like a constant kind of process. Um, but where do you begin? How do you start? How do you say, OK, well, I want to be a reflective practitioner. I want to look at my teaching. I want to be able to, to kind of look at what I do in the classroom. I want to be able to come out of the classroom at the end and think, OK, well, that worked well, that didn't work well. What tools are there? to equip us to do that? Where do we start with that? Um, and what the British Council feels, um, and Equals and Cambridge English feel, is that the key thing that helps teachers with their professional development or continuing professional development are um, some kind of framework. Okay? Um, equals calls it something different. I think it's called the profiling grid with Equals. Isn't it? Do, do, do you, I mean... I'm sure most of you know who the British Council are because you're here. Cambridge, you want to know who equals are. If, if, if you do, if you don't, um, don't worry. Um, they have a, a, it's something called the European Profiling Grid. Okay? Um, Cambridge English have their teacher framework and the British Council have developed a CPD framework for teachers. Um, about mm, two years, maybe less, no, about a year and a half or so ago, um, we were invited to, um, the British Council, Cambridge English and Equals were invited to um, give, a, give a, a kind of a joint talk at um, a conference in Barcelona, the International House, um, to talk about our frameworks. And after, after, the, after, the, um, after the talk, I was talking to the guy from Cambridge English, a guy called Andrew Nye, 
um, and, and we realized that we'd all developed our frameworks in, in isolation um, and kind of put them out there. It, I think it's part of that almost um, that kind of way that you, you do things in, in, in secret, perhaps. We, we, we developed ours, Cambridge developed theirs, Equals developed theirs. So what we did was we sat down with them and we, we've, um, we've produced something, called, it's a, a joint statement. So we have a joint statement on, on the frameworks, which um, gives an idea of the, the sort of commonalities, I suppose, between the, the, uh, the three frameworks. But um, I don't know a lot about the Cambridge framework, I don't know a lot about the Equals framework, I know about them. <laughs> I don't know um, as much as I know about the British Council one. So this is um, what the British Council's CPD framework for teachers looks like. Um, if, you, if you kind of remember the 80s sort of video games, it looks a bit like Pac-Man, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah? Um, which I'm still within the, the frame. Um, you've got numbers 1 to 12 around there, um, and then you've got I don't know if you can see it. Awareness, understanding, engagement, and integration. The numbers, 1 to 12, represent what we've called professional practices. And the professional practices are 12 areas of teaching that, that, we, that we think, based on our knowledge and experience with, with, with teaching, um, make up what essentially is, is teaching, good or bad or otherwise. Um, within each of those professional practices, there are more detailed um, elements which, which give you a bit more of an idea about what that professional practice is. What I'd like you to do, um, just very, very quickly, there's 12 professional practices that make up teaching. What do you think those 12 might be? Okay, but just with, uh, with the people next to you. All right? And at home, uh, if you're watching at home, obviously, if you're talking with someone, with them, or try and make a list. I'll just give you a minute. You've got an unfair disadvantage down there, Joe. You should, you should, you should know these. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you one to start you off. Okay, okay. Uh, un understanding learners is one. Understanding learners is one of them. Okay, I've mentioned a few of them actually earlier on. Okay, any ideas? I haven't given you very long, I know, I'm sorry. <coughs> one, one from here. Knowledge. Yes, you, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Right. Okay, so, so keeping up with, yeah, with, with, with the teaching practice and investigating and finding out what's, what's new and what's current and okay yeah any more communication skills okay any others adapting to the learners yeah okay adapting to the contact adapting to learners okay here. any technologies using technologies okay i'll show you i'll put you out of your misery so we've got planning lessons and courses that's the first one understanding learners is the one that i gave you managing the lesson uh, knowing the subject, which, we, um, which, which you kind of mentioned down here. Uh, assessing learning. Uh, integrating ICT. Taking responsibility for professional development, which could possibly be kind of what you're talking about. It's that the idea of research um, and, and keeping up to date. Using inclusive practices. Um, so it, it might be things like special educational needs, um, being aware of that and bringing that and a knowledge of that into the classroom. Um, using multilingual approaches. Promoting 21st century skills and understanding educational policies and practice. Those are the, the, the 12. What, what I should point out at this point is that when we develop this, this framework, we've, we've we developed it um, and it has been developed, it is developed for um, sub, all subject teachers. It's not specifically related to English language teaching. Okay? Pretty much all of those 
um, with the exception perhaps of multilingual approaches, can be applied to any, any subject teacher. So if you're a maths teacher, a science teacher, etc., etc., then um, these apply. Okay. Um, so this is what, for example, understanding learners involves. So these, these are some of the elements that we've included in um, understanding learners. Making decisions about teaching and assessment by applying an understanding of the following learner characteristics, and then they're listed. Uh, exploring theories of learning and applying them to your context and learners. Conducting needs analysis and applying the result. Applying and understanding the impact of the learning environment on learners. Okay, so that's... Um, what it looks like if you look at the elements of, um, of, of each professional practice. Okay. They're also divided into four stages. So you've got awareness, understanding, engagement, and integration. So awareness is something that you've heard of. So I know what multilingual, multilingual approaches is. I kind of know that I've got students who um, might, be, might speak different languages. I'm not really too sure what to do with it, though. Understanding, you know what it is. And why it's and, and importantly why it's important um, engagement you de you demonstrate competency and then integration you de demonstrate a high level of competence and that's where we're kind of all aiming for that 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 level of, of integration obviously when um, if if you looked at those professional practices and you thought about your own teaching um, what you would end up with and what what we've found from from evidence is that nearly every teacher ends up with, a, with um, something called a jagged profile. So the, you can see the arrows sort of going down into the middle, and then you've got awareness, understanding, engagement, and integration. The idea is, is that you plot where you are um, with regards to each of those professional practices, and I'll talk about how you do that in just a second. But essentially what happens is that all teachers come out with something called, as I said, a jagged profile. So you might be at an integration level for some things, you might be at an understanding level for others. Um, so that, in terms of what I was talking about before, being reflective practitioners and, and being continually um, aware and looking at and reflecting on what we do in the classroom, we feel that the mechanism to, to, to use, or the scaffold, if you like, to use to do that um, is provided by this framework. In terms of identifying initially um, areas for, for development. So you kind of go through a process of, um, of needs analysis um, where you identify your, your gaps, if you like, move through to input where you might get some kind of training um, or you might get, um, it might be from conversation with colleagues, it might be from peer observation, um, and then um, looking at integration, so actually kind of putting that into your teaching practice. And then um, finally the idea of, of, of kind of being able to measure that. So it's not enough just to say, okay, I think this is where I need to develop. Okay, here's some input. Brilliant. That's great. Okay, here I am doing it in the classroom. Boom. Yes, that. You need to be able to measure that and, and, and measure the, um, the impact of that. How, how, how has that worked? Has, has it worked? Have, has what I've done and what I've implemented or integrated into my classroom, has that really made a difference to the student's learning? Okay. Um, so, where were we? What we have, then, is the framework that I talked about. We've got a self-assessment tool, which I'll look at in a minute. Um, we've got free resources on the Teaching English website, which are all mapped to the different professional practices. And we also have um, something called modular training. Okay? So for each of those professional practices, we've got modules of training, which are self-access. Um, each module is about three hours um, and divided into three units. Um, and they're also divided into um, the four stages of development. So they're divided into understanding, awareness, um, engagement, and integration. Okay? So the idea, and what I'll show you in a minute in this video that I'm going to show you, is, is that you assess yourself. Um, you can access the resources. If you want to, you, you can do some um, training. Um, and then you implement that into your teaching and measure that and monitor that. With, um, with observation tools or other, other mechanisms that you might have in your school. Okay, the video that I'm going to show you now, um, there's, there's no volume on it, it's just visual, um, takes you through the, uh, the, the web page, if you like, um, or the learning management system that we've built, which has, gives you access to the self-assessment tool, um, 
So we'll go through that. You'll see how that works. Um, and then we'll show you some of the resources on teaching English. And then also, finally, some of the, the, the modules that are available. OK? All right. Um, so this is the page. Um, we've still got courses, which are moderated. Um, there's the free resources. Click on there. Go to Teaching English, and you get all the free resources. Uh, we've got the individual modules, and there's a self-assessment tool. So the idea, let's go up and down, um, courses, modules. Uh, it's quite difficult to talk as the video is running, actually. Um, assessing your skills. OK, so this is kind of what it looks like when you start. This is the first time we've shown this to anyone, actually, by the way, so, um, so be gentle. So the idea is there are nine sections, OK? Um, nine of the professional practices are, are tested, not all 12. And you've got five statements. I think in total, there are like 47 in total. Um, so you go through, you read the statement, you decide whether the statement's not clear, whether it's clear but you're not sure how to do it. You can do it but not very effectively. You can do it quite well. You can do it very well, OK? Um, obviously, this is, this is self-assessment. So in terms of reliability from an ex external kind of perspective, it's, it's impossible to, to, to have that, because um, it's obviously subjective. Um, so for, as, as an as a assessment tool within an institution for teachers, you sh it shouldn't be used in, in that way. It's really just for, for you as a teacher to um, think about your own teaching and, and begin kind of analysing and, and evaluating where you are with certain things. OK, this is understanding your learners. Um, there are nine. We haven't chosen multilingual approaches. Uh, we haven't chosen taking responsibility for your professional development. And we haven't got um, uh, educational policies or practices because they're not relevant in, in, in every context. And the taking responsibility one, is, it kind of encompasses the whole, the whole thing anyway. So this is what you end up with um, at the end. So you have, it should take about 30 minutes to do. Um, and, w and what you end up with is a kind of an evaluation, if you like. So you've got awareness, understanding, engagement, integration, and your, your kind of results are plotted there for each of these professional practices. Okay. What happens when um, you've finished is you get this, this, this kind of feedback. And then also, if we scroll down, <laughs> eventually, um, is recommended modules of, of learning, okay? So you'll see that they're, they're all called engaging, understanding, integrating, um, most of them are anyway. So the idea is that where you've scored low, um, for example, 21st century skills I scored low, the modules there are an understanding level. If you've scored fairly highly with engagement, then the modules there are at a higher level, okay? This is just on the Teaching English site. So we've got on the teaching English site, you can see all of the professional practices are there. Um, and this is the, the, the framework in kind of PDF booklet form that you can download and print off. We do have hard copies, but I don't think I've, I've, I haven't brought any with me. Um, but you can see pretty much there, you've got all of the professional practices, the stages of development, um, and then the elements for each, each professional practice are there as well, okay? So plan lessons and courses involves the following elements, boom, 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 okay? With the self-assessment, um, we haven't chosen all of the elements because there's about 130 of them in total. So obviously to sit there and assess yourself on 130 elements, you'd probably kind of fall asleep about halfway through or give up or leave or lose the will to live, okay? Um, so in terms of, of free resources, let's have a look. 21st century skills. So you can see you've got, that's, a, that's um, a video tip. Sorry, this is just the, uh, again, the, the professional practice and the elements on the actual site. We've got publications, there are articles, blog posts, etc., etc. Okay? And hopefully, we'll go back and then I can show you a little bit about what one of the modules actually kind of looks like. It, it's a very kind of whistle-stop tour. I cut this video down last night from about 10 minutes to 5. So, um, so I, understanding thinking skills, obviously my 21st century skills were so, um, severely lacking in my self-assessment. So I'm going to go to Unit 1. There's an introduction. There's various things within, um, within, the, um, within each unit. So you've got 
questions to think about. You've got video to watch. There's audio as well. Um, there's kind of quizzes to help you think about and reflect on, on, on what you've listened to or what you've watched. Um, there's a video of a classroom environment to give you an idea of, 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 of other contexts, um, what are thinking skills, and, and so on. Uh, thinking skills involves learners using their mind to find a solution or answer. True or false? True. Um, thinking skills come naturally. True or false? False. Okay. You don't have to copy my. Oh, my answers are right. Okay. Done it. <laughs> uh, okay, and so on and so on. Da -da 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 -da. This kind of click and click. So you click on the answer, you put it into the statement, and so on. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much um, what, what a module looks like. The idea um, that we thought from, from an, an individual's kind of point of view, um, obviously, is that you can go, you assess your skills, you've got resources there. Um, if you want to do a module to help you, then you've got a module um, there as well. You can, um, you can put several modules together to form your own course if you want to. At an institutional level, obviously, um, it works in terms of, let's say, a Ministry of Education comes and says, OK, we want to train um, 1,000 of our teachers. Those 1,000 teachers assess their skills. Um, and then you, you generally see there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a com you see common themes that appear across that 1,000 that, um, that teachers. It allows us then to, to take modules and put together a, a, a very specific tailored course for those teachers. And we're doing that at the moment in China, in India, um, in, uh, in the Balkans, um, and in Malaysia as well. OK, so we're, 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 we've, we've just kind of launched this, really. Um, it's really just kind of coming in into practice. So you've been given an exclusive view of, of what, what it looks like. OK, um, so... Beyond that, beyond the modules, beyond the resources, beyond the self-assessment, what, what, what helps us? What, what helps us as teachers to, um, to develop professionally? What are the things that, that make the most difference? Um, and when we were developing the framework, and when we were, when we were developing the, the whole teaching for success approach, um, what we looked at, or one of the things that we looked at, we looked at a lot of research, one of the things that we looked at was um, this report by Catherine Walter and Jessica Briggs, um, who looked at, it, it was a... Um, a study. They basically, I think they, they looked at over, over 200 schools um, uh, around the world and looked at what they do with their professional development and then formed, wrote this paper based on that to, um, to pull together the, the, the things that they felt made the most difference to teachers. Okay. Um, the first one is that it's concrete and classroom based. So if we think about research, often you say to people research, um, people, people imagine you know, big heavy books and hours and hours spent in the library or trawling papers online to try and find information. But, but really, a lot of the research, that, the teacher research that, that should happen, should happen in, in, in the classroom, where, where we're working and where we're um, with our students. So the idea that, um, that we need to go off and, and read lots and, and become very intelligent isn't necessarily the case. The case is that we, that we look at what we're doing in the classroom, we evaluate that and we reflect on that, and then we make changes based, based on that. Um, oh. Sorry. The second thing is it brings in the expertise from out the school, outside the school. Now, obviously, from, um, from a physical point of view, if you get someone who's, who's considered an expert um, to come into your school and give a talk, it, it's, it's expensive. And we all know that, that you know, money isn't exactly um, flowing at the moment in education. So um, it might be that that expertise that comes in from the outside isn't necessarily a physical presence. It could be that it's online. Um, and in fact, people who are watching online now um, maybe can't come to this conference, but are able to watch it online and are able to, to think about and focus on their professional development in that way. A lot of the, the kind of the big names, I suppose, or the big writers or the big, um, I don't know, famous, right, famous people in education um, often have um, online blogs, um, they give webinars online, and, and, and they're almost invariably free to attend. Um, this, is, this is where I plug next week's um, event, which is... This is the online CPD conference, which I'm currently organising with, um, with others in, in the team. 
It's, uh, it's five days. It starts next Wednesday at midday UK time. There's uh, 65 talks, or 66 talks, I think. Um, and we've got, I think at the moment, that we've got about nine... Well, yesterday when I checked, we had about 9,000 people registered. So it should be quite um, successful, hopefully. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, then take a photo of that, that slide and the link is there. Or go to the Teaching English website and it's there on the home page. You can click and find out there's the program if you want to look at the program, if you want to attend one talk, two talks. Is anyone, is anyone registered for it? All of you, for people online watching, everyone in the room is... Uh, is with <laughs> OK. Um, have, have a look. Go and, um, and have a look and see if there's anything there. It goes on yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. OK. Uh, and it's all kind of themed. So the first two days, it's all around um, taking responsibility for your professional development. On the Friday, all of the talks are related to um, things like multilingual approaches, things like special educational needs, so teaching kids with, um, with, with for example, autism, or et cetera, et cetera. All of the talks are around that. On Saturday, uh, there are talks on assessing learning, integrating ICT. On Sunday, the talks are around um, integrating ICT and 21st century skills. We've got a panel discussion on the Sunday looking at, um, at that. So if you want to, um, to come along, then please do. Um, OK. The other thing involves teachers in the, air, in the choice of areas to develop and activities to undertake. So when we were developing the framework, um, we, we, we obviously wanted... Um, one of the key things, one of the big things, I think, is, is teachers um, taking that responsibility and, and feeling that, that empowerment, perhaps, to, to, um, to, to take the step forward to, to develop. So the, the idea with the self-assessment tool is, is it allows teachers to, um, to do that. Obviously, you're, you're far more involved and engaged if you've reflected yourself on where you might need to develop um, and, then, and then take that forward. Okay. Obviously, I, I know in, um, in a lot of contexts, in, for example, in mainstream education, if, if it's not necessarily recognised by the institution themselves, then obviously you're, you're, it's a battle to get your CPD or your development recognised um, at an institutional level and obviously also at a, a, a higher kind of policy level. Um, there needs to be that kind of um, approval, if you like, from, from that level too. But it can also begin kind of from, 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 from you, from us. Um, it enables teachers to work collaboratively with peers. Um, so good CPD um, encourages um, action research groups, for example, um, peer observations. If you're working with a group of teachers and, you, and you're all assessing your skills and, you all, and, and, and a group of you find that there's a certain area that you, that you all feel that you want to develop or need to develop, then working collaboratively on that and being able, if, you, if it's possible, to go in and see each other's classes um, is, is, a, is a hugely powerful uh, mechanism for, for, for development. Or it might just be simply meeting. You know, if, if, if you don't have the facility to go and watch other teachers, um, then, then working on things in your classroom, reflecting on that, and then meeting with other teachers to discuss is, um, is, is also a very powerful way of developing. OK, um, provides opportunities for mentoring and coaching. This is kind of a little bit like the peer, but obviously where you've got teachers who are perhaps more experienced, or I say more experienced, and going back to the original quotes, experience doesn't necessarily mean that you're a better or worse teacher in certain things, but where you do have someone who has expertise in certain things, um, then, then, then good CPD can, can offer that um, for you uh, if, you're, if you're one of those people or if you need that, that kind of mentoring or you need that coaching. Okay. Um, sustained over time. So this really is, is the continuing bit. This is what I was talking about, that it's, that it's, that it's, it, it's not continuous. It's not, okay, here's, here's a gap in my teaching. I need to work on that. I've worked on that. I've implemented that. I've measured that. Kids are happy. Brilliant. Done job done, I can just forget about it now. No, it's something that you have to, connect. as I said, it's cyclical. So it needs to be something that we, it, it's kind of ingrained in, in, in what you're doing in the classroom as you're teaching, as we're teaching, sorry. Um, and then obviously the final one, which is the, kind of the, the, the key one, I think, it's supported by effective school leadership. So it's, um, that's possibly the most difficult one to get, <laughs> I think, sometimes. Um, but what we kind of hope really is that, um, that the mechanism or, the, or the, the whole teaching for success approach where you've got those elements, where you've got a framework, where you've, you've you can actually demonstrate evidence of 
um, needs um, and uh, a need for, for kind of development in certain areas um, is something that you can kind of go to the, um, the administration with um, at least as, as, as a tool to, to try and um, make them see that, that there is a, a, a need to, to develop in certain areas of teaching. Um, if that doesn't work, then I think this, the last slide is this one, which is um, a quote by a guy called Simon Borg, who was one of the consultants that we used when we were developing Teaching for Success. So I'll just read it as well as, as you reading it. So it's um, the benefits of CPD. Its benefits extend from individuals to groups and institutions and ultimately to the quality of education in the classroom. Some commentators have argued that improving student outcomes is the primary purpose of CPD. So um, whilst we've been talking about us, and it's all about us as teachers, developing and becoming better teachers, the ultimate um, benefit of, of good CPD and the ultimate benefit of being reflective teachers and um, thinking about what we do in the classroom and working on improving that and making ourselves better each day at what we do is that the student outcomes improve. So students get the benefit of that as well. They're learning quicker. If you're, um, th th there's various bits of research, but if you're a, a good teacher, it really makes um, a massive difference to, to um, how quickly and how effectively students learn. There are various graphs that I'm not, I'm not going to show you, um, but it's, um, it's incredible the difference actually that, as I'm sure we all know, um, having a good teacher in a classroom makes to, to students in terms of their learning and their outcomes and them becoming, as we say, equipped for, for life outside of school. Okay, I'm kind of pretty much done. So we've got a little bit of time, I think, three minutes. Am I right? Yeah, three minutes if you want. For further reading, um, people like, these people are good to look at. Um, Anne Burns is very good. Um, a guy called Simon Borg, as I said, who was um, a consultant on this project. Uh, Thomas Farrell talks a lot about reflective teaching and teacher research, uh, as does Simon Borg. Andy Hockley is very good on um, things like observations, peer observations, uh, also management. Uh, Will Cardoso and um, obviously an old favourite, John Dewey from the 19th century, who still has a lot of um, relevant comments to make about, about good teaching. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Before you have to clap. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Who actually is this geared towards? Uh-huh. Um, it's a good question. I mean, I think um, you mean in terms of whether it's mainstream or ELT or... Right, OK. Um, I, th I think when, when we developed the, the whole approach, we, we were thinking of, of, of subject teachers. So I think um, the, the, the thoughts were more towards mainstream education. Um, and in fact, the... the the CPD wheel, that, that, that framework, um, was originally developed um, as, an in, as a project in India um, that we uh, kind of adopted for, for a more global approach. Obviously, it, it, it's global, so it's quite general, but the idea, especially as it's, as it's aimed at subject teachers, is that it's, it's, it's kind of really more, I suppose, subject teachers than ELT. Uh, for both, for both. For both, obviously, you know, it has its place in ELT, it has its place in, um, in in education in general. But the idea, I think, is that yeah, primary, secondary, um, tertiary. We've also got um, a framework for teacher educators. So we've got the whole the whole approach includes an appro um, a framework for teacher educators as well. So teacher trainers, mentors, coaches, um, because obviously, they need to develop and they need to be reflecting as well. So if you're a teacher trainer, we've also got. Um, that, that framework too. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yes. No? Good. We're done. Thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>